Here's what I see before I turn the lights on in my shop. Good morning, this is Doug with Design 8 Studio, and I hope you can hear me over the logging operation that's happening near my house. Uh, we are working on installing our 48 inch magna bend, electromagnetic sheet metal brake that has arrived. And uh, I first saw this tool in use on the cloud42.com YouTube channel. And just like he did, I wanted to put uh, some heavy duty casters on the bottom of mine. And so I'm about to drill for being able to mount those casters. Drilling wasn't necessary on two of the four legs because they were made to be bolted to a floor. So they had large uh, bolt holes already drilled in them. Uh, but two of the legs were meant to be kind of uh, leveling options and they will need to be drilled. So uh, luckily I've been able to set the base with the legs on it on the shipping crate, the wooden box that the Magna Bend came in and adjust my uh, drill press while placing it on the floor to the right height. Uh, so I'm just about to do that drilling and uh, I'll try to point the camera at it and follow along for you. So here you can see on the floor uh, where I've unloaded the big magna bend out from under the shipping crate. And here I have the base. I've already attached the legs to the base. And I mentioned to you that the front legs already came with holes pre-drilled for bolting the legs to the floor. So those I was able to mount the heavy duty casters on with no problem. But the back legs uh, had this leveling feature they had uh, a nut and bolt set that allowed you to screw the bolt down. And underneath that is a little uh, plate, a little steel plate that is welded on only at the back further up. And the front of the plate can be pushed down. The force of the bolt can push the plate and it serves as a leveling feature. So I've got to drill not only through the hole for the bolt, but I've also got to drill through the metal plate that's underneath that. So I've got my drill press on the floor already and uh, I'm using the crate to actually hold this up while I go to drill it. The studs for this thing are, I think probably would be classed as M12. Uh, with my calipers, they measure at 11 and a half millimeters. So my half inch drill bit, the largest one that I have in my set, is uh, slightly oversized but big enough and the next drill bit down is too small. So we'll be using the half inch uh, drill bit to drill this out.
Okay, one down, just gotta do that for one more. Okay, with that step done, we'll clean up and put in the studs and mount those last two heavy-duty casters. So this is the heavy-duty caster that I'm using, and it's a, both a swivel and um, has a leveling leg feature, so it can serve as a stationary locked item or as a mobile item. Okay, so just one more of those to mount, and I'll have this thing ready to bolt the stand onto the main body of the tool. Forgive me for working off camera, but uh, I got help. This is a two-man lift. Got the main unit lifted up and put onto the base. We've got everything screwed together and bolted in. And so the last thing is that I need to get a plug for the power cord. They ship the power cord without a plug because different people around the world use different kinds of plugs. So I've got a plug on order. And as soon as I get a plug attached to it, I'll be able to do some test bins to show you a little bit of this machine in action. As I've shown in earlier videos, I built a plasma cutting rig using a Lowrider 3 as the motion control system and Linux CNC as the uh, CNC control software. And uh, this is a little bit of footage of me cutting um, a, a project that a friend uh, commissioned me to cut, but it is the addition to my shop of this tool that I built using uh, free open source plans and free open source software uh, that has really spurred me to go ahead and spend the money on the Magda Bend. And so uh, this is an exciting tool that opens up all kinds of artistic and creative possibilities as well as utilitarian possibilities for creating functional parts and tools. And so that's why I went ahead and sunk the money into buying this uh, tool. I should mention also that ever since the patent expired and the inventor of the MagnaBend is no longer directly uh, profiting from it, he opened up uh, the plans for it and made it publicly available to all. And somewhere along the way, a Chinese manufacturer began producing the product. Now, in my research, I have discovered that all of the American vendors that you might want to buy this product from are not manufacturing it, but rather they are simply importing it from the Chinese manufacturer. And so since I could not buy American made, but rather only buy Chinese made that was being imported by American companies, I just skipped the middleman and ordered the Magna Bend uh, straight from the company that makes it for the American companies. And so 
I wish that wasn't the situation, but that is the situation. So just wanted to explain that briefly. Okay, let's get on to the attaching of the plug to the magnet bend so we can get to the testing for you. Okay, so the plug that I ordered came in. And in this particular plug calls for the wires to go in through holes and then screws to tighten down on them. And uh, it's always preferred to put a ferrule onto the end of the raw wire as opposed to uh, clamping down on the wire itself. It's better to clamp down on the ferrule. Uh, so um, use the, the wire cutters to get all three wires to the same length, then use the wire strippers to get just enough uh, bare wire exposed for the barrel end of the ferrule. Uh, and then uh, link in the description for that, link in the description for the ferrules. And then uh, using this crimper tool, which is one of the neatest inventions, uh, you can press the barrel of the ferrule onto the wire. And uh, forgive me, I did that off camera. This particular wire, um, I'm guessing was about 14 gauge and the 14 gauge is what I used. The 14 is denoted there. That's what I used for stripping the wires. And then the blue is denoted in the package as being for 14 gauge wire. And that again, seemed like a perfect fit. So I used the blue ferrules. And so uh, again, forgive me, I did it off camera, but all three of these wires, uh, and this is single phase 220. So the black and the white wires are both going to be hot with uh, somewhere between 110 to 120 or more volts and the green is the ground and each one is inserted in and then the screw is tightened down on it uh, be sure to put this in place uh, on the back of the cord before you insert the front and then uh, this is simply tightened down on with two screws here once it's in place but before that uh, you bring this up and You'll notice there are um, there are little screw um, holes in there, and those line up with these two screws here. And so once all of that is lined up, you're able to bring this together and then um, tighten this up right here. And these screws are have an amazingly amazing uh, steep pitch on their threads and they go in with a rather amazing speed. And so that's how we're getting our plug buttoned up on our 1250E Magna Bend. Two more quick tips regarding the installation of this plug. Uh, there are different uh, plugs and different outlet configurations for different voltages and different types. This particular one with the grounding plug at, the, at one end and then a vertical and a sideways, that is single phase 220. It's impossible for this plug to be inserted into a 110 socket. Each different configuration of electrical application has its own designated plug and outlet. So if you've ever seen some crazy looking plug and wondered why, it's because it was made to signify a different application. By the way, each different, um, each different electrical application, each different voltage in the wall has a different uh, wiring that is designated for it. So check the charts and install the right wiring. Uh, by the way, that also means that, for example, if you've got wiring that the best it can serve for is uh, 110 volts, you shouldn't be putting an outlet on that wiring that wrongfully, deceptively communicates that that wiring is beefier than it is. Uh, the final point I'll make here is that when you go to clamp the back down onto the cord, be sure that those clamps are biting onto this um, external sheathing, this external uh, insulation, as opposed to just those, uh, the wires inside of it. 
we've got this all ready to plug in and next up we'll hopefully be able to show you some bending taking place. So one last thing to mention and that is that if you don't have single phase 220 in your shop for powering for example the magna bend or your plasma torch then you can buy a step up step down transformer and I shopped carefully and ordered this one on AliExpress and this box brings 110 into the back and brings uh, 220 out the front. 110 in the back, 220 out the front. It does this by the magic of coils and electronic engineers know how it works and uh, I listen to them and trust their guidance and they don't steer me wrong. So this is easier and faster and cheaper for me than trying to run a new line of 220 for my breaker box all the way across my whole house to get to where I need it on the other end of my shop. So step up, step down, transformer. Okay, so I've got some scrap uh, 18 gauge metal and 18 gauge is I think 0 0.048 inches thick which is about 1. Uh, 1. 1.1 millimeters thick. And um, this really little narrow flange on the end, just kind of as a torture test, I'm gonna try to see if it can grab a hold of the back half of this tiny flange and fold the front half, which if it can, I'm gonna be super impressed. But this thing is supposed to be able to hold with uh, I think six tons of clamping force. So there we go. I've got a really narrow flange of 18 gauge steel. Uh, I think 16 gauge is the most this thing is rated for bending. So we need to flip it into uh, bending mode and then uh, to ensure hands-free, uh, no danger of your fingers being uh, in the way, you either have to engage this thing with, your, with the green buttons or you can use the foot panel. I'm keeping my hands well free. I'm using the foot panel and it's now engaged electromagnetically. it and I am super impressed I am super super impressed that thing held on it held on to that tiny flange and bent that tiny flange of 18 gauge steel it held on to that tiny lip at the back and bent the front lip of that 18 gauge steel so I'm super impressed. This thing is really amazing. And I hope to bring you more on this in days to come. Hi, this is Doug Joseph with Design 8 Studio. If you like our content, please click like and subscribe. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm. And until the next video, I wish you happy making.